So we're going to be starting something new today. We're going to be starting a new chapter. And the next chapter, chapter 15, is on electric fields and matter on a large scale, macroscopic matter. Uh, we've been dealing with electric field of a point charge, and if you have two point charges, uh, you have a dipole, right, a positive and a negative point charge. And so we've been looking at le electric fields due to uh, microscopic particles. What we, want, what we now want to do is look at the overall effect of electric fields and electric interactions on large-scale matter. But we're still going to be looking at a sort of microscopic perspective to understand this. And we first want to talk about the idea of just net charge, which probably all have an idea what this is already. It's just the algebraic sum. of all the charges of all the particles of an object. Okay. So if you're looking at the overall charge or net charge of an object, we know that there are charged particles, right? I, Matter is made of atoms. Atoms consist of a nucleus, which contains protons that have a positive E charge. Uh, neutrons have a zero charge. And then electrons uh, surrounding the nuclei, which have a negative E charge, right? And so how do you find the total charge of something or the net charge of something? You just add up all the charges of all the protons and all the electrons. And in most ordinary matter, uh, the number of protons, the number of electrons is the same. So when something has a net charge of zero, we call it neutral. And the everyday matter we just kind of ordinarily see is usually neutral, right? I mean, this table doesn't have any uh, net positive charge or net or net negative charge. It's has the same number of protons as electrons. And so the, the balance is actually pretty extraordinary considering the number of atoms in most matter, right? A mole, one mole consists of about 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms. So, you know, there's 12 gram. This is mostly carbon. So there's one mole of uh, carbon is uh, 12 grams. This is a lot larger than 12 grams. So there's a huge number of atoms in a table or a, a marker or what have you. Uh, but yet all the Usually, the number of protons and electrons is the same. But we can, well, we'll get to that in just a second. Another idea we want to just introduce is the idea of conservation of charge. Which is the idea that net charge The net charge of a closed system is conserved, stays constant. Sometimes we say charge can, net charge can neither be created nor destroyed. It always stays the same. So the net charge of a closed system like the universe, I think as a closed system, would stay the same. Uh, you can have charged particles being individual charged particles being annihilated. Uh, so for example, if you have a situation like in a particle accelerator where you have an electron being fired at very high speed straight at a positron, which is the antiparticle of an electron. Okay, so we have a charge of negative E and a charge of positive E here. With that same mass of particles fired at each other, and if they collide, what often will happen is that the result of this collision is that the particles themselves will annihilate. They will go away. You'll no longer have an electron or a positron, and instead you'll have two photons being emitted, photons being particles or quanta of light. And photons don't have a charge. 
Okay, so there's no charge of the photons. What was the total charge of the system, the two particle system, before the collision? Zero, right? What was the total charge of the system after the collision? Zero, okay. So charge is conserved, right? Even though the individual electron and, and positron may be gone, uh, we had a net charge zero before, a net charge zero after, so conservation of charge will hold.